In order for you to have a healthy relationship with others, you must first have a healthy relationship with yourself. Jesus said that the first commandment is to, the first greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your soul. He said right. the second is like unto it that you should love your neighbor as you love yourself. And so I think what he was saying there was, was it's, it's hard for you to love others if you don't love yourself. And that's why I think a lot of people can't do those things on their own because really they don't like themselves. So you have to learn and, and be okay and heal and, and learn to love you first. everyone and welcome <laughs> to another episode of Marriage Matters for those of you who are watching for the very first time. My name is Glenn Coleman and I'm joined as always by my gorgeous wife. Tanya Coleman. Hey guys. And like I said earlier, this podcast is called Marriage Matters. It's a podcast where we talk about all things relationships. And so uh, how are you doing? Speaking of relationships... Well, how are you? I'm doing great. How are doing you? Good. I'm doing pretty good. good. Pretty good. Uh, just trying to get this podcast episode I there. Know. I, behind the scenes. So this is our third attempt at uh, getting this podcast <laughs> done for you guys. But you know what? We are committed yes. to getting this message out. Uh, so we had some technical difficulties. We had some puppy interference. Mm -hmm. uh, but hey, all of that's life. And uh uh, life is all about adjusting and pivoting. Yes, so uh, we're going to you're going to we're going to get this information out to you. So yep. uh, so, you know, we like to give you tips and tricks to help you enhance uh, your life, your relationships and all the things. So all of the things. So we're excited for the next three weeks for sure. Mm -hmm. We may go longer, but I know for sure for the next three weeks, we're going to be talking about um, the effects of uh Dependency, mm -hmm. independency, and interdependency mm -hmm. in relationships. Dependency, interdependency, I'm sorry, dependency, mm -hmm. independency, and interdependency mm -hmm. in relationships. And how each of each one of those uh modes are uh are are what do you want to call them? Uh, uh, modes or mindsets. Mindsets, uh, um, the way that you emotional states yeah, show up and affect your relationships yes and so today this week we're going to be talking about dependency dependency and so you know one of the things that's really important for you to understand uh or to to to, to be aware let me say mm -hmm. it that way mm -hmm. is we talk about these things for you to be aware because sometimes you know you could be doing something you could be operating a certain way and you're not even aware mm -hmm. that that you're doing that that you know i always say a lot of times you know uh some of the habits like saying, you know, sometimes I'm not aware that I even right. say it. But right. now that I'm aware of it, right. I'm aware when I say it. But I didn't know I said it until I went back and listened to myself, right. you know, on a mm -hmm. recording before. Right. So it's the same thing with the way we operate a lot of times in our relationships. We're not we don't e we're not even aware that we're doing certain things. We're behaving a certain way or, you know, uh, uh, you know, for certain people, it's like every time this one person talks to you, Mm -hmm. You snap or you look away or anyway. Mm -hmm. So if you are aware, then you can do something about it. The other thing is sometimes we, we do things and we may not even be aware that what we're doing may not be beneficial to our relationships. Right. Because we think that it's a, a good thing, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so anyway, I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. So, um, so let's kind of get into it. All right. So looking at dependency... Um, we really felt like bringing this out, uh, bringing this to the surface um, was a good idea uh, for couples to be able to recognize, locate themselves and things like that. Um, uh, like Glenn said, to bring awareness. So typically when a person is uh, functioning from a place of dependency, they find it, a re they find it really difficult to do things um, independently 
of their partner. Mm -hmm. You know, they rely very hev heavily on their partner, mm -hmm. um, rather that be um, making a decision, um, going places, um, just being super needy. Clingy. Clingy and needy. And, and, and so I'll say this, that I forgot I'm to say sorry, this. you have an eyelash? Oh, get that it, girl. bothering me. Get it. All right. You made a wish? Got it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but we, I think that all, all of us kind of sometimes fluctuate in all of these. You know, if you have dependency on this end of the spectrum, uh, independency on this end of the spectrum, mm -hmm. which the extreme of either either of those could be bad. What we want to get to is interdependent. Right. And we'll they talk about that in a, in a couple of weeks. Right. Um, so I just wanted to say we're talking about dependency, mm -hmm. not from a like I'm a dependable person. That's right. not what we're saying. We're right. saying that, like Tanya said, that you are relying on someone else to meet every need or meet some need, whether that's emotional, mm -hmm. whether that's financial, mm -hmm. whether that's um, uh, what, whatever. Yeah. You can't function without that other person right. in your life. Right. So I want to read the, I'm going to read the definition of dependency to make okay. sure that um, I get it right and that it's clear. Okay. Um, so dependency is defined as a strong need for constant validation from others, especially partners and friends. It is furthermore likely to make you feel lonely when alone and always seek company, even if you don't really like the people keeping you company. Okay. I thought that was very interesting. So it's the need for constant validation, mm -hmm. you know, that, oh, you're so beautiful. You're so smart. Mm -hmm. um, you did a great job, you know. Um, whatever you just, you need the, the validation, the reassurance. Yes, you're, you, you can do it. You know? Yeah. Just, you know, you're needing that extra push from your partner, yeah. you know? And I think the key word there is constant because we're not saying that you should never get validation sure, or exactly. compliments or, but it's, it's a thing. It's the constant need, need for it. And if you don't get that, constant validation, mm -hmm. the constant approval, then you can't function in life. You can't complete the task without the, the constant. So that, that's one of the things that um, I really found interested in the definition. And the other thing that I really found interesting in this definition and really kind of brings to the forefront, mm -hmm. uh, maybe, or help you determine whether or not you're, you're operating in your relationships. And here's the other thing you can this can be like you could be very interdependent with, uh, you know, maybe your parents, but very dependent when it comes to your spouse or vice versa mm -hmm. or whatever that relationship is. Mm -hmm. So I'm, we're not saying that you you it may be certain relationships that you operate this way in. Sure. But one of the things that that uh, I thought was interesting, it says uh, you always seek company. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't really like the people you are keeping company with, you just right. need someone. Right. You need another you, person yes, present. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, and we all know those people who go from relationship to relationship mm -hmm. because it's like they don't like, they can't be by themselves. Mm -hmm. They are always in need and are, are always have to be with someone. And, you know, that's a very toxic relationship, mm -hmm. not only for the person who's operating that way, but for the person that's being needed because right. then if if I'm always needing and taking and taking and taking and drawing from you then that means that you are um your love tank right. is is not, full. not full you're you're right. being depleted mm -hmm. um and you know it's like you're not always around the person because you really love them. You're always around that person because you always need something from them, whether that's validation, mm -hmm. whether that's emotional stability, uh, whatever that thing is, it's like you, you always need that from them. So that's just not, that's just a very toxic situation. Um, and, you know, I always say, um, you know, you're ready to get married or, you know, you're ready to be in a relationship when you don't need to be. Right. You know? right. I think that that word need is is very key. Um, there's one thing to desire, you know, mm -hmm. or to want. But when you are coming from a place of need, it's like you are looking for some 
thing or someone on the outside to fulfill mm-hmm. you on the inside. Yeah. So and I think that makes a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, there's a difference, you know, between a lot of people use the scripture where, you know, God said it's not good for a man to be alone. Mm-hmm. But yeah, when God created Adam, he was alone, but he was not lonely. That's exactly and that, right. and there's a huge difference between being alone and lonely. As a matter of fact, Adam didn't even realize that he was by himself because mm-hmm. be, because his relationship with God fulfilled right. everything. And, you know, we, we talk about, you know, one times one equals one. It's mm-hmm. one whole person times one whole person equals one whole relationship. Mm-hmm. And, and and like we say all the time, that doesn't mean you're going to be perfect in this. Right. No, not but it does mean that if you are needy, that is not going to equal a good, healthy relationship. A whole healthy relationship, right. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, how do you know or how can you recognize for yourself if you're operating from a place of dependency? So I can, I'll just speak for myself. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I, we talked about the spectrum and I think I tend to swing a little bit more to the independent side mm-hmm. of it. Mm-hmm. But there are some areas in my life where I, I have recognized my dependency. And one of the things is the inability to make decisions on my own. Mm-hmm. And you're always looking for other people to make decisions for you. Right. Um, and so... That to me, and again, I'm not saying that you never defer to people, mm-hmm. but, but what I am saying, if you find yourself in a, con- you constantly always pushing the decision off on someone else. Sure. And, you know, there's a number of things that could be driving that. It could be fear of messing up. Mm-hmm. It could be a feeling of inadequacy inac- mm-hmm. or, you know, I don't know enough. I don't, I'm not good enough, so on and so forth. Right. But, you know, one, I think, example of the ways people operate in dependency is always allowing people or always wanting people mm-hmm. and needing people to make to make uh, decisions for oh, them. Yeah. 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 Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. Um, it's like you're almost afraid to take responsibility. Mm-hmm. You know, if I make the decision, then now it's on me. Yeah. And so, like you said, so if I mess up, if it was the wrong decision, um, then it's going to be my fault. Yeah. You know, um, another thing, another way I think that we can check to see if we're operating from a place of dependency is if you're in a situation of distress, mm-hmm. um, say, you know, whether it's an emergency situation, um, you know, we know emergencies are different for, for all people. Right. Uh, but, um, you're just you're in a situation where you feel some sort of distress and instead of you sitting or trying to figure out on your own how to manage or handle it you immediately go to your spouse you know Mm -hmm. you call them you know or you know you talk to them about it before even trying to reconcile with yourself what's going on and how you may need to just wrap your emotions around it, not maybe even what to do sometimes, but just have an opportunity to assess and wrap your mind around how you feel about it Mm -hmm. and then begin to process, okay, so what am I going to do? Now, that's not to say that you never go to your your spouse in in times of distress. Yes, I'm going to always have conversations with you about things like that, but I'm not looking to you to solve the problem for me, or you're not my immediate go-to before I even have an opportunity to check with me to see how I feel about it, what I think about it, you know, um, and even look for solutions. Mm-hmm. You you said something when we were talking earlier, mm-hmm. you said that most people don't want to feel the yes, feelings or the feel that they, they avoid it. And the way they mm-hmm. do that is they automatically, they, they want to call and nothing wrong with venting. I mean, I really, I, there are people in my life that I can call and just talk to certain things about, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I need to make sure that I'm feeling, you know, feeling is part of healing. Yes. You know, yes. Uh, we were talking about that with um, some of our friends over at the kitchen table mm-hmm. uh, with Mark and Melissa Dunwar and some of the other staff there. But anyway, um, we, 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 we automatically want to jump to the, the healing. And, right. um, I just, I, I believe that there's something to be said about feeling those emotions mm-hmm. and, 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 and going through the process mm-hmm. of, of, of experiencing them, sitting with them yeah, and processing them. Yeah. and processing it and not immediately wanting to jump out of it. 
mm-hmm. and 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 avoid and mm-hmm. deflect mm-hmm. those emotions. Yeah. So I'm do, so instead of me processing my emotions and dealing with my emotions, I'm going to depend on you for your emotional stability or and I'm going to ride your coattails mm-hmm. to make sure that I'm emotionally sound and what you're doing is you're setting yourself up for uh, an emotional breakdown is sure. what you is what you're doing. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. You're not giving yourself um, the buildup, the stamina, um, training yourself to be capable to manage those things, you know, on your own. Another one um, that may be a little, I guess, less heavy is just being able to go somewhere by yourself, not needing your partner to be present to, you know, treat yourself to a nice lunch or go shopping or, you know, because I've had conversations with people um, that, you know, well, I never do anything because I I don't have anyone to do anything with. Well, why Mm -hmm. do you need someone to do something with? You know, my husband's always working, so I don't have anyone to go to the mall or, you know, out to dinner with. Well, if you want to go out to dinner, he's working. Take yourself out to dinner, you know, and it took me a minute, you know, to get there too, you know, um, I, my aunt, my aunt, uh, Mary Jean, uh, I remember, uh, when I was younger, after her husband had passed away, um, she would go to dinner, you mm-hmm. know, by herself, she would go to the movies and I would always say, why, you know, how did she just go sit in a restaurant, you know, by herself and not like McDonald's, like a nice Chinese mm-hmm. place, you know, or, um, take herself out to, you know, and not buffet Chinese place. No, I, I wasn't saying anything. <laughs> I wasn't saying, right. I you, didn't... you know, but I mean, yeah, nice restaurant. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I didn't mean, I didn't laugh that much. Okay. Anyhow, um, <laughs> or go out to a movie and it, will, it would all, always like strike me. Like you really went out to the movies by yourself or you went to dinner by yourself. And it's yeah. like, yeah, I enjoy, you know, my own company sometimes, you know? Yeah. Um, and so for me, it, it took me a minute to get there, but now I have learned how to do that. I did that the other, you know, Saturday when mm-hmm. my appointment uh, was canceled or what have you. I was like, you know what? I'm going to take myself to one of my favorite places um, for a late breakfast and just sit and have breakfast and drink my tea and people watch because I enjoy watching people and, you know, things like that. And it was great. Mm -hmm. But if you find yourself struggling with being able to do those kinds of things, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. um, So I think with that, I think a lot of times I think people in, in order for you to have a healthy relationship with others, Mm -hmm. you must first have a healthy relationship with yourself. Jesus said that the first commandment is to, the first greatest commandment is mm-hmm. to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your yes. mind, with all of your soul. He said right. the second is like unto it that you should love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm-hmm. And so I think what he was saying there was, was it's, it's hard for you to love others if you don't love yourself. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think a lot of people can't do those things on their own because really they don't like themselves. Mm-hmm. So you have to learn and, and be okay and heal and, and learn to love you first. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I, I used to think that, uh, you know, I used to say, we you know Whitney Houston was wrong for saying that the greatest love of all is first of all, loving, learning to love yourself, mm-hmm. you know, but before you could do that, mm-hmm. You, you must learn to love yourself first because it's hard for me to give what I don't have. So you're saying before you can love others, yes, love so someone much. else. You before have to you can love, love someone yourself. else, you have to first love yourself. Yeah. And the reason, like I said, the reason why a lot of people don't like being alone with themselves mm-hmm. is because they really don't like themselves. Mm-hmm. They don't like what they see. They don't like their mm-hmm. the way they think. They don't like any of those things. But, you know, there there's what I would encourage you to do is is start spending examining that. It's like, why do you think that way? Is it something that somebody told you? Is it something that somebody did to you, or, right. or whatever that is? Right. Um, but that's the, I think that that's part of the reason why we some people struggle with doing things f- with themselves is because they really don't they don't enjoy being with themselves. Yeah, that's true, Glenn. That's yeah. real good, babe. Yeah. Um, so some symptoms of dependency. You want to start talking? Yeah. About those? So I, I think that one of the symptoms are the adverse effects of. Mm-hmm. When you operate this way, and again, we're talking about an extended period of time. You know, right. like I said, I think right. sometimes we all we kind of swing in and out of these things mm-hmm. depending on where we're at in life or what's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it could be just you know a moment that you're just experiencing something. So 
you know, there may be some dependency, but it's it's when you stay in that state for longer than expected. In other words, um, you know, it would be like me. I, I expected Bethany and Bailey at some point to be potty trained. Sure. And unless there's something physically wrong with them, mm-hmm. right? So it would look really weird for me to be changing, changing their diapers, diapers at mm-hmm. this age, right? Mm-hmm. So that's what we're saying. When you're staying in that state longer than you should. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things I think happens in there is you lose your identity. Yeah. Because you are literally giving people uh, permission to tell you who you are, what you like, what you think, all of those things. Mm-hmm. And you don't know who you are, so there's there's definitely a loss of identity. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's and, a dangerous position to yeah, put it yourself is. in. Yeah, you know, and I know sometimes people find themselves there because they may be dealing, you know, with an abusive situation, an abusive person, you know, um, or a group of people. Um, but to if that's not the case, but you have. Uh, you're operating from this place of dependency and now you've basically given this person, you know, your spouse or partner, you know, full control basically over you, Mm -hmm. you know, and that could flip in some very negative ways. Yep. Yep. So loss of identity is one that I I definitely think. Mm -hmm. Um, I think also it builds uh, resentment um, in the other person. Mm-hmm. So if I am being um, operating from a place of complete dependency um, on you, then over time, I think that that will build a sense of resentment um, for you because now the role is not partner in life. You know, we're, you know, we're married and this is a partnership and a team when we do things together. But when I am completely, um, dependent on you, then you have now become like a caretaker, You're which my is parent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I and, want a partner, not a parent. Right. Oof, which is glory. exhausting. You know, <laughs> that, that becomes exhausting in, yeah. in, in a yeah. different relationship. Yeah. Unless there's, you know, sickness or illness or something like that that happens, then that's a different situation. Mm-hmm. But if I am able and capable, you know, right. of making decisions and doing things on my own, but mm-hmm. I'm just re- emotionally just refusing to do it, mm-hmm. you know, then that's a different Kind of yeah, I, I, there was an episode of Seinfeld uh, that I remember watching, and it, Jerry Seinfeld, he was a comedian. Mm-hmm. He is a comedian in real life, but he was a comedian on the show as mm-hmm. well. Um, but they, I remember they were traveling, uh, and they had to run a car, and his agent, she was with him, and she was like, okay, you know, what 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 uh, color car do you want? There's a red one, there's a blue one, mm-hmm. there's a green one. And uh, she he was like, oh, the blue one. He's like, okay, now what size do you want? Do you want a full size? you want a mid size? you want a compact? And he just got, he, he was like, would you please just make a decision? And I think that's the way we get sometimes, right. you know, it can right. be frustrating mm-hmm. for the person that we're, we're putting all this dependency on. And they're like, you know, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't sign up right. for, to in this together. for a, a, another child. Right. I, I signed up for a partner in this. Mm-hmm. And so it, it's frustrating that way, but it's also frustrating and builds, builds resentment, I believe, over time in the person who is giving that over. Oh, sure. Because yeah. there's these things that, that, that I mean, I know for me, like if, if, I, if I am hungry and I go for an extended, it's like the Snickers commercial, right? Mm-hmm. You wouldn't like me when I'm, it's like you get snappy, you get over, you know, over time. Mm-hmm. So um, I think that's why it's so important um, that we, we, I, we learn to identify when we're doing this uh, and Take, and we're going to give you some strategies to to come out of it a little bit right. later. But mm-hmm. so yeah, I just so build frustration and resentment. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing is as the potential for abuse. You're opening yourself right. up to really be the victim of abuse in in whatever area. However, you know, um, in in a, a wide variety of, of abuses, sure. right? Sure. Um, so, and I think it also com- contributes to. Um, low self-esteem. Mm-hmm. Uh, it keeps you in that place. It's like a this perpetual thing that you know. If if you believe that you're not good enough and right. you're not uh, smart enough, or all those things, then you will subconsciously do things that that 
reinforce the thing right, that you're believing. Right. It, they, it, they will validate the fact. Will validate it. And then since I just validated it, it reinforces my belief, mm -hmm. which reinforces my doing. Right. So in, in some kind of way, you're going to have to break that cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, lastly, that, you know, that behavior pushes other people away mm -hmm. um, because, you know, it's just really hard to be in a in relationship with someone who is completely dependent on you. Mm -hmm. It feels like stress. It feels like pressure. It mm -hmm. feels like, like you said, this is not what I signed up for, yeah. you know? And so you may find that your, your spouse may be, you know, pulling away or may have, there may be uh, some distance that's been created because it's become too much yeah. for them to handle. And so this, these are just a few things that you may want to look for, you know, within yourself and in your relationship to determine, am I operating from a place of dependency? You yeah. know, is my spouse operating from a place of dependency? And, you know, we will talk about some things yeah. that you can do to combat it's, that. I think another good, good reference, like this is another Hollywood reference, but mm -hmm. it's the scene in Coming to America, the first one, right? Uh, yeah. Whenever uh, Eddie Murphy is meeting, his character is meeting his bride for the first time. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and he's like, uh, you know, what's your favorite food? And she's like, whatever you like. Mm -hmm. um, and he's like, uh, you know, do you have favorite color? Yes. What's your favorite color? Whatever you like. Mm -hmm. And it's like that dependence. And it's like, man, that is... I, I, I don't couldn't. think for myself. I don't right. and make that's decisions a, for myself. I don't know if I am I whatever want. you want me to be. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> and that's going back to that loss of identity. Right. Everything we right. talked about, mm -hmm. uh, the potential for abuse, mm -hmm. all of those things are present in that mindset. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, I just, I just know that I wouldn't, I could not see myself. I see how that can get frustrating. Sure. I see how that can get toxic very mm -hmm. fast. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about just for a second. Kind of a cousin to dependency is codependency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And codependency is defined as the tendency to put others' needs before your own. Mm -hmm. Before your own. Uh, you accommodate uh, to others to such a degree that you tend to discount or ignore your own feelings, mm -hmm. desires, and basic needs. Mm -hmm. Your self-esteem depends largely on how well you please or take care of and solve the problems for someone else mm -hmm. or many others. So that's codependency. It's not that I'm dependent on someone, but it's like I get my fulfillment or, or my being comes from how well I can take care of others. Of other people. And I mean, that may sound great and good, mm -hmm. but again, um, it sounds very noble. It does. Mm -hmm. It does. But when you are, whenever you are denying yourself, mm -hmm. you know, it, your needs, and your desires and you're always pushing your needs and your desires and your wants mm -hmm. to the back burner and you're doing this for everybody else, um, it can become a very dangerous thing. And I know for sure, I know from experience in my life mm -hmm. where I've done that, mm -hmm. that there there is some resentment that I'm still working through because I pushed my what I wanted aside right. mm -hmm. and, and I didn't go out there and follow my dreams, you know. Right. And, um, you know, and I know, you know, want is not a bad thing to have a desire is not a bad no, thing not at all. and i know some of you maybe say well you know the bible says uh my lord is my shepherd but i shall not want and i i understand that and that's biblical but what you what you miss is the rest of that scripture the reason why there is no want in this person's life is because his shepherd has provided everything Absolutely. and it's not that this person did not want anything right. it's just that the shepherd has provided everything right. and that's but I think the problem with codependency is even when the shepherd puts what we desire right in front of us, we push it aside and say, no, mm -hmm. I, I want mm -hmm. I want to make sure that you're OK. And the other thing that you're doing when you're codependent, not only are you robbing yourself of your fulfillment, but you're also robbing others of being right. able to. To, to to do the reciprocal back to you. Yeah, Does that makes sense. Good. That's very good. So we'll talk about some symptoms of codependency and some areas that, again that you can look at and do some self assessment uh, for yourself in uh, your relationship with your spouse or you know just within yourself. And before we hit those, can I say yeah, one more thing? Sure. So and I just want to keep making this clear: we're not talking about when people are demanding 
this from you. This right. is what you're doing. So uh, one example I like to use is, and, and, and unfortunately this happens, I, like, I say it a lot in mothers and wives, mm-hmm. and that you think that to be a good mom means you have to do all, be all and do all for your kids. Mm-hmm. And, and just give, 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 give. And I hear mothers brag on this, mm-hmm. that, you know, I gave up everything for my kids, mm-hmm. okay? You do realize that you're only designed to have them in your life for maybe 21 years. Mm-hmm. And then after that, so then what do you do now when they're gone? Mm-hmm. And that that's everything you lived for. So you mean when your kids are gone, that means you 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 no longer live, right? You know. So right. I'm just saying that you 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 have to be very careful when you're thinking that way. Mm-hmm. Then there has to be a balance to that, and you're you're doing what's necessary. I think you said this was the last podcast or one before about how it's hard for you to pour out to others when you're empty. Yes. And that's what codependency creates is it creates emptiness and voids in, 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 yeah, in our yeah, lives. Yeah, absolutely. And I think when people do that, you know, we do have to be very mindful of that. It's almost like we're using that as an escape from doing some things that maybe we, we know we need to do or we should be doing, you know, and so instead of me stepping out and doing that or me working on me and focusing on me and some things that maybe I need to work through, then I'm going to use this other situation, rather be my husband, my kids, um, church, whatever, to escape things that I need to work mm-hmm. on within myself. Yeah. It's going back. I'll say this and I'll, I promise I'm going to let you do the symptoms. Uh, Excuse me. But it's going back to that. You know, we think we have to do to have mm-hmm. so we can be, mm-hmm. but it's, that's, that's backwards. It's not do have be mm-hmm. it's be do have. Yeah. So it's, you have to put the B first. Yeah. So I am a good mother. So therefore I do these things for my kids, but I also know how to take time for me and replenish and refresh mm-hmm. so I can always be there for my kids and I don't burn out. So mm-hmm. that's good. I just want to so throw that in there. Let's look at a couple of those symptoms of codependency. One, okay. um, this person, uh, you find no satisfaction or happiness in life outside of doing things for other people mm. or for the other person, if it's your spouse. So you feel, so I'll put that another way. You feel bad when you do things for yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. There is that sense of, and I mean, you mentioned mothers and wives. I mean, that there is a real thing. That mom guilt is a real thing. Mm -hmm. When I do something for myself, when I decide that I'm going to work outside of my home, or when I decide that I'm going to stay home and take care of my kids, then I'm, I feel guilty because I'm not contributing to mm-hmm. the. So it's like this thing um, that, you know, it can go either way. Mm-hmm. But it, I think it's about wholeness and that that sense of being in this healthy place between me and the father and knowing that where I am is where I'm supposed to be right now in this season. Mm -hmm. You know, um, stay, you stay in the relationship, even if they are aware or they stay in the relationship, even if they are aware that their partner does hurtful things, Mm -hmm. you know? And so again, this can be your spouse. This can be, uh, a job situation. This can be, you know, any type of situation where Mm -hmm. you know that this person has done hurtful things to you or even others around you, but you remain in that situation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, a person, uh, you do anything to please and satisfy their enabler, no matter what the expense is to themselves. Mm. So when when a person knows that, um, you know, well, so and so do it, they'll take care of it, you mm-hmm. know, um, and they may be enabling that codependency you know, have, oh, I don't have to take care of this myself. You know, I know he's going to do it for me. Um, They're enabling you to operate in that mode, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, feel there's a sense of feeling constant anxiety about the relationship due to their desire to always be making the other person happy. So there's no peace, 
You know, mm-hmm. there's that that anxiousness because I'm always trying to figure out how to please Glenn, mm-hmm. you know, how to make him happy. You know, mm-hmm. am I doing this right for him? Am I, you know, so there's no peace. There's this constant turmoil that's happening. Yeah. I, I, I figured this out that I am not responsible for Tanya's happiness. Absolutely. Neither is she responsible for that's mine. That's 100%. And so if I'm depending on her for me to be happy... Mm-hmm. Then that's going to be a miserable life because I'm now my life is being dictated by someone else, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And 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 all of this stuff where we the dependency, you know, there's only one person that you should have totally totally dependence on, and that's our Father, yeah. God, mm-hmm. and because He's the only one who can say I never fail, mm-hmm. I've never failed. And I can't say that. I've messed up. I've failed. I've broken promises. I've lied. I, yes, I have. I have lied. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've lied to myself. I've lied to others. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like, so for you to be dependent on me or for me to be dependent on totally, and I'm not saying we don't depend on each other, but I'm saying my total life well-being cannot be wrapped up right. in, a, in a And person. my happiness being completely being, fulfilled yeah. through you. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. I hope I hope this you guys will get it. So I hope you this is making sense. Yeah, so yeah, me too. If, if you don't get it all the way, inboxes or callers or something. Uh, but I think you're getting it. So. Yeah, amen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this person, you may use all of your time and energy to give your partner or your spouse everything that they ask for. Mm. Or the person who, you know, you're in a codependent relationship. You just go above and beyond you go out of your way you exert yourself um to just exhaustion you know Mm -hmm. it's that empty cup you're pouring out and pouring out of this empty cup Mm -hmm. um also you feel guilty about thinking of yourself in the relationship um and you want to express your own personal needs um or desires in that relationship you know everyone has needs and desires in a relationship you know and when we Um, silence them or we push them down, those needs and those desires go unmet and go unfulfilled. And so then you get that, that sense of, of of resentment, of Mm -hmm. neglect. Um, um, There, there's a a hurt that happens because sometimes we expect other people to just know, well, they're not going to know unless you say. Yeah. And another thing that I found with this is, is in expressing my needs and desires is sometimes it's not even about the need or desire being met as much as it is about me having the opportunity to express that. Absolutely. I agree. You know, with that. and I think yeah. sometimes because sometimes here's the deal about when you say this is what I need, now that other person has the right to say, okay, I can do that. Or they can say, uh no, I can't do that. Or right. maybe I'll meet you halfway on that. Or let's renegotiate that. Mm-hmm. But my point is I think it's something to be said about saying mm-hmm. this is what I need. Mm-hmm. Because you never know, you're never going to know, you, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. If you don't express yeah. those needs. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Um, so, uh, and then the last one is when you find yourself in a place where you're ignoring your own morals and um, conscious, you know, mm-hmm. you are ignoring your your moral compass, so to speak, to fulfill this other person's needs and um, going against, you know, doing things that are completely out of character for mm-hmm. you. So mm-hmm. those are some areas, some symptoms that we wanted to bring to the forefront to give you an opportunity to, again, do some self-assessment and checking to see where you are. If you are, if that's an area that you're struggling with, that your spouse may be struggling with, um, your partner, your best friend, you know, maybe this is some things that maybe you want to bring to their attention but mm-hmm. we want to be able to give you the tools to be able to do that so mm-hmm. i'll let you uh kind of so so the last thing we want to do is give you some 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 things to help you move away mm-hmm. from dependency mm-hmm. and the first thing i would say you know i talked about for me about the inability to make decisions and so one of the things that i've done for myself is to make decisions Mm -hmm. and start just small. If I have an opportunity, if I have an opportunity to make a decision, I'm going to make one. Um, And I still, you know, I still sometimes with the bigger things, I still sometimes it may take me a while, but Mm -hmm. I'm still going to make sure that I make a decision. Um, I I got a, I got a a friend of mine uh, sent me a quote from Napoleon Hill. And he said, the man 
who, and I, I can't remember the exact quote. I'm paraphrasing the, the quote, but he says, the man who hesitates or takes a long time to make a decision when they have all of the information in hand cannot be trusted to carry out the decision once the decision has been made. Mm -hmm. So make a decision. If yeah. somebody, what do you want to eat? Cereal. Make a decision. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Just just start making decisions. Right. I, I'll say go to Starbucks because Starbucks right? is a place you where breakfast. you have to make, you know, three, four decisions in like 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. I want a grande uh, chai tea latte with coconut milk, hot. Mm -hmm. and a side of banana nut bread. Do you want that warm? Um, do I want it warm? Do I want it warm? Yes. Yes. So he gives you a chance. I know that's kind of... No, but it is. It's a great way it's to, a, to it's practice just, making so decisions. Make practice making really decisions. And I know you may think, oh, well, that's not really not necessarily. Mm -hmm. But if you are in the habit of not making decisions, the way you start making them is you start with the small stuff. Mm -hmm. So don't if, if, if somebody asks you, what do you want to eat? Don't ever, don't ever say, while you're in this mode of coming out of dependency, don't ever say it doesn't matter because mm -hmm. it does. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, another one um, to help you move away from dependency is intentionally begin to do more things on your own. Mm -hmm. um, rather than that be like we discussed earlier, going out and, and catching a movie, you know, going shopping, going to eat on your own. Um Whatever it is, just begin to practice doing things independent of other people uh, so that you can become okay with that. I also say start so small with like taking 10 minutes just to go out in the backyard by yourself mm -hmm. or taking uh, like, you know, we both enjoy taking baths, just, mm -hmm. you know, in the bathroom by ourselves, light off, maybe a, a, a podcast plan or something. Just taking that me time, mm -hmm. I think just practicing that and being alone with yourself mm -hmm. and 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 allowing those emotions. And I guess the next one we want to talk about, just allowing that stuff to come up and just maybe kind of just start the process of, of processing, mm -hmm. start the process of processing. <laughs> Right. Because it is a process. Yeah. 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 Be, it just be uh, like Glenn said earlier, begin to just sit with those emotions and those feelings and, you know, figuring out, you know, what's going on with me, asking yourself the questions. Why? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, so uh, what do you do if your spouse or your partner is operating from a place of dependency yeah so again i'll just start with the one with the uh, with the the not making decisions because mm -hmm. like i said I, I i know for myself that's something that i am working through oh yeah i'm working through and one thing that i've learned by working through this myself is for other people mm -hmm. is stop giving people all the answers mm -hmm. and instead of giving them answers ask them questions mm -hmm. to help them you know, and the, the question could could be something as simple as, you know, I always make those decisions. What do you right. want to do? Right. You know, um, there could be a lot of different things mm -hmm. um, that could um, that you could do to to, to spark, uh, you know, those de decision making. You know, um, I, I always do this. You know, why, why don't you do? It? Why don't you right. pick pick the place for a right. change? Right. Of where we should go and eat, so on right. and so and forth. And reassuring them that you are fine with whatever decision yeah. that they make. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's the other thing, you know, once they make the decision, you, that's a horrible right. idea. Yeah, don't you can't, you just can't go, do with that. You go with it. Go with it. If you, hate, <laughs> if you hate hot dogs and they want hot dogs tonight, you might just have to eat a hot just, dog. Just go with it. <laughs> go with it. Um, so then the other, uh, another suggestion, like we talked about being intentional for that person of doing things on their own. Well, then as their spouse or their partner, encouraging them, you know, to do more things for themselves, you know, you can do that by buying them, you know, a spa day gift certificate or, mm -hmm. um, certificates to their favorite places to, to dine or, you know, coffee or, you know, things like that, but encouraging them to, get out and do some things independent of you. And again, that, Hey, I'm okay with that. I want you to be able to treat yourself and enjoy time yourself. with yourself. Yes. Treat yourself <laughs> uh, and enjoy time with yourself. Yeah. I like to say, that, Hey, look, I'm, I want you to have a, 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 a me day. Yeah. So here's a Starbucks gift card. And I bought you the, your, a book 
You know, go to Starbucks and just spend some time you know reading. Know what I like. Look at that. You know, Starbucks journaling. Yeah. Like you said, uh, here's a, a, a pay for you go to the spa. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever, whatever. So just yeah. So mm-hmm. you know, do all those things, um, and just giving them those time, the time to to process, and not always just. And, and sometimes, especially when it comes to our kids, this can be a painful thing. Mm-hmm. You know, to watch them struggle through mm-hmm. something, you want to run to their rescue, but you right. can't. Right. You can't keep doing that because they'll never learn. They'll never be. And and I, we always say one of our responsibilities is to raise responsible yes. adults. Yes. So, and emotionally healthy. Yes. Adults. So teaching yes. them these things and and allowing them to to or helping them to move from a state of dependency to inter- interdependence mm-hmm. from codependency to interdependence. And so so next week we're going to talk about uh, independence. Yes, and what that um, looks and like. And what that looks like. So um, before we get out of here, we just want to thank you. Thank you guys so mm-hmm. much for all of the feedback, yeah. for all the comments. Um, we, we, we really appreciate the love. And like I said, we're doing, the reason why we're doing this is because our goal is just to help people, mm-hmm. right? And so if you know somebody that would maybe benefit from this, by all means, share it with them. Uh, leave us comments. Um, thank you guys so much, so much for letting us be a part of your community, mm-hmm. part of your world. Mm-hmm. I'll be so, so appreciated. Um, you could always follow us on Facebook, Marriage Matters 0526. Same for Instagram, Marriage Matters 0526, as well on, as on YouTube, uh, Marriage Matters. Uh, I don't know what you guys are watching this on, so we would appreciate you going and following, liking, yes, subscribing, all like those things. Um, and also, if you like listening to podcasts on Apple Podcasts like I do, um, we're also on Apple Podcasts. We're on, you can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Google Podcasts, Spotify, mm-hmm. Anchor, pretty much any digital outlet that right. has podcasts. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we want to make all those opportunities uh, available for you guys. So, you have you have anything else? No, that that was it. I think we covered everything, and so we just look forward to continuing this conversation with you guys next week. All right. Well, this is Glenn and Tanya Coleman reminding you that your, your marriage, marriage matters. matters. We'll see you next week. Bye.